Michigan Wolverines will look to pick up the pieces Saturday night at home as we welcome in Anthony Bellino. You see him every morning here on BCSM at the X's and Bros show. And Anthony, what can you say? A, a, a 16 point lead in the third quarter. And then Kenneth Walker, the third, takes over in the second half, and Michigan State ran away with a victory. Literally ran away with the victory. Uh, I think that, you know, over the last couple of days, the one thing that I, I, was, on, I was unaware that Michigan fans were actually rafting is what they were doing. They, were, they, were, they all jumped in a river. You know what river that is? Denial, right? And it's not just in Egypt, Mark. It's denial. And that's where we're at right now. I mean, you talk about that 16 point lead. Let me get fired up real quick. You're winning 30 to 14, right? You dominated early portion of the game. You got a turnover early on in Michigan State's first drive. You take a 10 nothing lead. You're feeling good. Second quarter, Sparty punches back. That's fine. It's 23 14 at the half. You still feel really good. Kate McNamara stolen the football all over the place. Uh, you know, the running game is a little shaky, not a whole lot brewing there, but that's okay because you feel good about the way the defense played in the first half. You come out in the second half, you put another seven points on the board in the third quarter, and then that is it. I mean, you got absolutely dominated from about the five-minute mark of the third quarter through the fourth quarter, and Michigan State closed out. That's what happened. I mean, that team, they came out, and even though they were down, they never quit. They never gave up. They never said that this is too hard or this is too much. They just kept showing up. And Michigan's offense, for I don't know what reason, you know, you look at J.J. McCarthy, fumbles one time early in the game, he did throw a touchdown pass, so that's cool. Uh, but the second time that he came out, Kate McNamara's in the tent. I think that after that first fumble, most people, you know, in their right minds would have said that there's no way that J.J. McCarthy's coming back out. They're not going to play that young freshman again. If Cade's in the tent, what are they supposed to do, right? That's your best option. It's unfortunate for the young man to fumble twice in that football game and then to lose the second one. Uh, but the defense, they didn't do him any favors. And I hear a lot of Michigan fans talking about the officiating and the 0 for 4 on the reviews. Look, you had the lead 30 to 14, and Kenneth Walker, the third, decided to go straight Heisman on you in the, in the final quarter of the game. There's not, I mean, we can talk about refs and everything else that we want. Michigan State, for the second consecutive year, retains Paul Bunyan. They prove that they are the more dominant program when it comes to college football in the state of Michigan. It's disappointing. It's disheartening. I'm not even angry. I, I'm, I'm, I'm literally shocked. I'm shook right now, Mark. That's, that's the status of me right now. A lot to unpack from that game. Let, let's start with one of the things you touched on, the officiating. And on Monday, Mike Morris said Michigan went to the game not expecting to get any breaks, expecting all the calls to go against him. He, he then backpedaled a little bit and said, we're the road team. You don't expect to get any breaks on the road team. But it's, it, it's easy to pick apart the officiating, but certainly that defensive touchdown that was taken away from the Wolverines, that really was one of the turning points of the game. I mean, the take, and especially against Aiden Hutchison of all people, right? I mean, the one guy who, if anybody deserves a defensive tutty, it's that guy, right? And then you have the ball that skips off the ground into the receiver's hands, and it's like, well, I mean, I, I mean, the ball touched the ground, so I, well, I, you know, whatever. As much as the officiating was poor, everything is under review. College football needs to bring in the NFL rules and bring in the challenge flag. We got to quit. Go Every play goes review, right? It's a noon kickoff on Fox. I always joke around. I'll see you Tuesday at 5 when the game actually ends. If you didn't have a team allegiance and you didn't care how long the game went, it was a fantastic football game, an instant classic between these two rival programs. It's great. This is much more of a rivalry than Michigan-Ohio State because we know what happens when the kids from Columbus come around town, right? I mean, I'm afraid they might hit 100 outs this year. Neither here nor there. This is a rivalry because – you know, the teams are three and three over their last six. Michigan won two in a row. They've lost the last two. Mel Tucker looks like he's got some really good things brewing already in year two. Jim Harbaugh and company, they look like they have a lot more questions than they have answers after that game. You don't expect the calls on the road. This game is not about officiating. Sure, some of the calls are, are aggravating. But at the end of the day, you're up 30 to 14. Close the door, right? Step on their throat. They didn't, they, and they never looked like they were going to kick it into the next year. Locally here, think about Central Catholic. If Central Catholic, the Fighting Irish, and Greg Dempsey, they go 30 to 14 on somebody, you know what they're going to do? They're going to put another 30 on the board. That's just like, that's the kind of attitude that they have. Michigan had that big lead. I saw Justin Rose tweet out, this game's over. And I said, that's a curse. That right there, I don't even want to look at the phone, can't look at Twitter. That is a curse right there. Nothing's over until it zeroes on the clock. Michigan State proved why. 
One of the interesting things was the game plan. The Michigan had a lot of success passing the ball. Cade McNamara over 300 yards throwing the ball. That has not been what Michigan has done all season long. Obviously, it worked for two and a half quarters, but not being able to run the ball, that's one of the ways you could salt away a victory is you hand it off to Corm, you hand it off to Hask. They, they tried handing it off to Corm. That's where the fumble occurred with J.J. McCarthy. And Jim Harbaugh kind of pointed the blame to Blake on that one, saying Blake knew what the play was. He should have had better possession of the ball. But not running the ball, not being effective running the ball, another one of those head scratchers in a big game for Jim Harbaugh and company. You know, which is crazy because when we look at the team rushing statistics, they still hit 146 yards. I mean, you know, Hassan had over 50 and Blake Corm had 45, but that's not nearly good enough. And Michigan State's defensive line uh, did a good job. And I thought Michigan's play calling was really kind of predictable in running situations. Like you just, and, and for as much as they passed the ball, and it kind of felt like when they came out, it's like, okay, we're going to sling it around today. That's what we're going to do. Kate had 44 pass attempts. He was great. Uh, no complaints there. The, the pass at the end that gets intercepted, I mean, you're trying to make something happen. And it just it, it is what it is. Good play by that kid from Michigan State. But uh, when you look at the running attack, every time they ran the football, it felt like you could call it out like, yeah, run play coming, right? I mean, it's just one of those things where they, I felt they were very predictable. I felt like Michigan State did a really nice job defensively at the line of scrimmage, and Michigan just could not break open one of those big-time runs. Kenneth Walker just happened to have like six of them during the game. But give me 15, 20 yards. Hassan Haskins had a couple of really nice carries, some grown man runs, some angry runs. Blake Corum drops that pass out of the backfield like, hey, you know, the big question on Twitter was, would you rather have Kenneth Walker or the one-two punch of Hassan Haskins and Blake Corum? Like, I guess give me the Heisman guy because he showed up, he made all the plays, and, and he did what he had to do. Unfortunately, it wasn't the same for Haskins and Corum. Defensively, Michigan struggled with the up-tempo Michigan State offense, which with Penn State looming, with Ohio State looming, Wolverines have got to be able to get into formations quicker, get substitutions in quicker because Penn State and Ohio State will exploit that if they're not up to speed. And that's not the first time this has happened this season, right? I mean, teams are, you're looking at the tape. You're like, yo, we're just going to go tempo on Michigan. If you get in a third down situation uh, that is third and short, uh, if I'm the offense going against Michigan, I'm going to substitute and I'm going to go a jumbo pack, right? I, I mean, I'm talking, give me all the hogs on the line possible. And I'm going to get that first down and then I'm going to sub. And you're going to have time for the defense to sub once the offense subs and tries to counter. Another third down situation, I'm going to go right back to it, but I'm not going to go jumbo. I'm going to run the football again when they start to stack the box or run into play action, when they stack the box, when all the beef is on the field for the Michigan defensive line. And that's where I'm going to, as soon as those guys are subbed on and we have that mismatch, I'm not subbing another guy off the field. And I'm going to go at them the entire game because Michigan, Michigan cannot figure out how to get the right personnel on and off the field in a timely fashion. Like if the down is over and it's first and 10, get off the field. Like, I don't know what needs to be said, or maybe there needs to be some sort of horn, a flare gun, maybe. I don't know. Get off the field. Get back in your base personnel package. And you got to be able to stop somebody in your base as well. Whatever you have out there, whether you're in the nickel or you're in a 4-3, you have to be able to say, hey, it's third and one. We're going to run our base out there because if they get this first down, they try to go again at us. We have to be ready. Like, they have to make that adjustment. They haven't done it all season. They didn't do it on Saturday. Mike McCarthy has that NFL background. Is, is that the big difference between college and the pros, is being able to adjust to the up-tempo offenses? Yeah, I think that the college game, you know, when you really look at it, because you're, you're looking at severe athletic mismatches typically in college. Like, the more athletic team, the team with the more five stars, usually wins these football games, right? Then you then you sprinkle in your strategy and whatnot. In the NFL, that 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 – that premise is kind of gone. You can get in your two man, your, your, your two minute drill, your hurry up offense, but defenses are, I mean, they're professional players for a reason. Those are grown men out there. They know how to adjust. They know how to adapt. Unless of course you're the lions. That's another story for another day. But I think that that is probably the biggest learning curve coming from the pro system to the college system is the way that they substitute how quickly the up-tempo offense is run. I mean, once you get, once you get going to in tempo, there's no reason to get out of it. That's the best way to beat Michigan right there. One of the silver linings perhaps coming out of this Michigan State loss is Andrell Anthony. When Ronnie Bell went down with the injury week one, the question was who is going to replace him as a playmaker. Boy, did we see some plays out of that true freshman out of East Lansing going back home and letting up his Spartans for two touchdowns. Yeah, he was great. I mean, that, that first 93-yard uh, scamper, I mean, that longest play from scrimmage in the rivalry, that was great. Uh, good on him. They, Michigan needs a playmaker, and they got to find a way to get guys like he and, and A.J. Henning. Where was he at? Like, they have to find a way. We heard all about speed and space all offseason. Well, uh, what space is that in? Maybe outer space. I don't really know. Uh, but they, that, that's the way that teams like Ohio State, that's the way that Alabama, they have these great athletes. They get them the football, and they get them out in space where, hey, if you have – one more wide receiver on your side, 
he's got to pick up his block because if you want the rock, you got to block Mark. And then secondly, you got to make one guy miss. And if you can do that, then you own that side of the football field. Michigan in Jim Harbaugh's tenure hasn't been able to do that. I think they're getting better at that. And Real Anthony could be the could be the answer or one of the answers uh, to that issue. Great game by him. That's got to be tough going back to East Lansing and losing there. Like, oh man, that's rough. Uh, I'm sure his phone was uh, exploding uh, after the game. But uh, you know, that's one of those one of those things. Michigan's got to get better at that. Winning those athletic matchups one-on-one. -on -one. Michigan fans certainly down in the dumps following the loss, but it could be worse. You could be Indiana, who came into this season thinking they were a contend for a Big Ten East title. Instead, they are 3-6, and six, and they are reeling as they come into Ann Arbor for a primetime game this Saturday night. Yeah, Indiana's interesting because you know who the running back coach used to be? It was Mike Hart, and now Mike Hart's in Michigan, and Michigan's running attack up until Saturday was probably one of the most, if not the most potent running attack in all of college football. And Indiana hasn't been able to run the football worth a lick uh, all season. Now, you lose Michael Penix, their quarterback, and that's a, that's a huge issue as well. You take him out, and, and their offense is going to look completely different. I think it's painful that this game is a night game, a uh, 7.30 kickoff on Fox. I'll see you next Wednesday then, I suppose, when that game ends because the fact, it, it did kind of feel like punishment like salt moon like play this thing at noon let's get this over with a night game against indiana a team that's going in a much different direction they're going to be out there they're going to be hungry michigan needs to lick its wounds right now get back out there and punch indiana season's not over at seven and one you can still do some damage if you can beat indiana beat penn state on the road beat maryland then face the juggernaut that is ohio state if you go 11 and one with a victory over ohio state and penn state and ohio state still have to play michigan state you might get lucky but that's a big ask, and you got to be able to get it done versus Indiana on Saturday night before you can get to those other three games. And that Hoosier offensive coaching staff still has some Michigan DNA in it with Nick Sheridan as the OC. Yeah, very much so. And I, I and Indiana struggled. I think that the expectation from the year before, I think that was a little fraudulent. I think that you know, sometimes in college football, you get teams that kind of burst onto the scene a little bit and they feel uh, like, hey, we're going to really build on this. You lose your starting quarterback in college football like it, that is it, it's a severe, severe loss because typically your, your, your backup is going to be somebody who hasn't been in the program as long, probably isn't as talented. And you know how much experience matters, <clears throat> J.J. McCarthy, uh, and when it comes down to playing these sorts of football games in Indiana, they have just flat out struggled. There's really no other way to put it uh, with Penix out and no run game. You're looking at a team that's two and six with their wins coming against Western Kentucky and Idaho. Like that's it. Like they haven't done diddly squat against anybody else. They're coming off of a loss against Maryland 38, 35, where they played pretty well. Uh, they were able to score some points. So Michigan's going to have to, uh, the defense has to step up. And, and, and at the end of the day, it's a college football game. Like those kids on the other side of the field in Indiana, the Hoosiers, they're scholarship athletes as well. They want to win just as bad and, and Michigan's going to have to prove it. Historically, Tom Allen's Indiana Hoosiers team have been good on defense, but this defense has struggled. Injuries has really taken a toll on both sides of the ball for the Hoosiers. But with, with the way Indiana will mix things up and blitz from any time, anywhere in the field, that's going to be a test for, for Cade and J.J., whichever one's in the game. Yeah, and thinking about the quarterback matchup here, um, I, I really like to see Cade McNamara as long as he's you know good to go. I'd like to see a very similar game plan to what they did with Michigan State. Like, let's just see it at this point. Um, you know, throw the football, let it fly, hopefully be able to establish the run game early, work off a of play action. But get Cade McNamara. He's so good in the pocket. His pocket awareness uh, was one thing that really impressed me last week. So let's get a little play action. Let's roll him out on a bootleg. Don't, like, don't be afraid to move the quarterback around. I'm not saying he's got to scramble or turn into, like, the second coming of Michael Vick or anything of that nature. But get him used to moving out of the pocket because I think Indiana's defense does present, as you mentioned, uh, some matchups there with they're going to send uh, you know a couple exotic blitzes and maybe some different looks that you're going to want to get Cade on the run you're going to want to get JJ maybe uh, on the run in this football game a little bit to get them used to passing because you know that Nittany Lion defense is coming down the road you know that Buckeye defense is coming down the road so I think it's a good opportunity to work on some things all right thank you very much Anthony Bellino Paul may be staying in East Lansing but we're glad you're staying with us here on College Ball Weekly see him every day right here on BCSN every morning with the X's and Bro show Anthony thank you don't count your chickens before they hatch, Mark. I might take that river right up to East Lansing. I might have to park up there, too. Thanks for having me.